We are now going to demonstrate how to remove and reinstall a rubber track on the Caterpillar 247-257 machine. Installation kits for the CAT 287 and ASV Terex 85, 100 and RCV machines are available. The installation process is slightly different and the full installation video can be seen on YouTube or the Bear Products website. First, we are going to raise the unit about 6 inches, secure on blocks and take any further safety precautions as needed to stabilize the machine. Make sure the boom is up in the air and the boom lock is set. This unit has a bare hydraulic tension cylinder, so we can simply remove the lower grease nipple to bleed the grease out to collapse the tension. Some pressure from your foot will help collapse the tension completely. Another method of collapsing the drive is with the use of a pry bar, like this. The machine in this video has the bare bolt-on alloy wheels. This kit will also work on both the factory or bare hub-style wheels. Once the drive is collapsed, we will remove most of the wheel bolts. We install the guide studs to protect the grease nipple as the wheel comes off and goes back on. These are simple studs that are installed with a flathead screwdriver. Three or four turns are plenty. If the machine has the full hub style wheel, remove the snap ring, dust cap, and nut off the bearing, then remove the wheel. Now we will pry the track off. Please take note of the pry points we're using. This is a brand new track, so there is little or no stretch in it. This can be a one-man job, but it's usually easier and perhaps quicker with two. There you have it. To reinstall the track, we position the track using prying equipment. A very slow turning of the track while applying inward pressure will move the track into place. These are the components for the bare track installation kit. It includes the push block, the saddle, and the hydraulic cylinder. There are two ways to stroke this cylinder. One is with a porta power. Porta powers are not included in the kit, but we have included male and female quick disconnects. If you do not have a porta power, you can stroke this cylinder by using this grease nipple. It's a messy job, but it does work well. Here, we're installing the push block. It slides right behind the second and third bogey wheels. Slide in a half inch bolt that locks it in. It hangs there. Next, push in the saddle, which goes between the front and the second bogey wheel. What the saddle assembly does is capture the hydraulic cylinder. As we install the wheel, it starts out at an angle away from the machine. As the wheel gets pushed forward, the hand crank tilts the wheel in square with the mainframe. It's a simple one-man job to put the wheel on. Note how the cylinder is aligned. At the end of the hydraulic rod, notice the L bracket with the hole in it. For this particular install kit, Disregard the hole which does not apply to this kit and is utilized on a different install kit for larger machines. Now we're installing the porta power which will stroke the cylinder out. We're positioning the wheel so that the grease fitting is protected by the guide studs. Make sure the notch in the wheel for the grease fitting and the wheel studs are aligned as best you can. He is stroking the cylinder out now. In some cases, if you are working on a bare super hub or a factory machine with these style hubs, it's necessary to remove the first bogey's wheel dust cover for clearance to get the right angle for the hydraulic cylinder. Next, we'll remove the guide studs, which protect the grease fitting, and then install the final bolts. The bolts will then be torqued to about 75 foot-pounds. When all the bolts are firmly in place, retract the install assembly and take it apart. If you have the full hub style wheel, then proceed installing the bearing, nuts, and final internal parts. Now, we will install the grease fitting for the track tensioner and reinstall the dust caps and snap rings. Safely lift the machine off the blocks, then lower it onto the ground. We will set the track tension with the machine lowered to the ground. Keep in mind, too much track tension is just as bad as too little. Too much tension is bad for the bearings on the front and rear idler wheels and can cause them to fail prematurely. As you can see here, one inch to one and a half inches of down deflection under 90 to 100 pounds of downward pressure right in the middle of the track gets you very close to the correct tension. As you've seen, bare track installation kits make track removal and installation a much quicker and easier job.